All right, everybody, this is Sheets, and this is going to be the final look for the MMA card for tomorrow. And I'm once again extremely happy that I did it this way. Um, with the first look being two days ago before I absorbed a lot of industry knowledge and uh, waited to see what, I'll, what else happened in some of these fights. Um, the first thing that you'll notice is that we did lose a fight within the last 24 hours, uh, Manel Kopp against uh, Bontorin. And um, uh, what that takes away is, is so Kopp was a $9,200 fighter who was going to be probably low owned because his inside the distance prop was a little bit, uh, was a little fishy relative to some others. Um, so to take him out doesn't really affect construction that much except just it reduces the overall combination so it, it really um you know creates more of a need to get different if in fact you want to try to take this thing down um the other thing i have to start with that has occurred since we last uh i spoke since i last recorded was we have to address this uh this della madalena fight with the meve okay because I don't, maybe I didn't notice uh, what the odds were before, but the odds of the odds right now are creating almost a theoretical lock for uh, Magdalena because he actually opened up an underdog uh, earlier this week, and he is now a minus one sixty favorite. Okay, um, so I mean to put that in perspective, you have. Other 160 favorites like, um, what's his name? I was just looking at Fialo, um, at Fialo, who's 8,500, you know? Uh, another 160 favorite, um, actually Fialo is a 145 favorite. Um, and then you have Zhang Wei Li is very similar and she is 8,700 or 8,800. So when you're getting Magdalena at 8,200 and a 160 favorite, um, that's that's really that's a lot of win equity uh, relative to his price. Um, I imagine that as a result, he's going to be really popular, but maybe not. Um, as we go through some of these other fights, we'll we'll, we'll talk about that. But uh, from a win equity perspective, he's, he is extremely strong. Now, again, he does not have that grappling upside um, that we like with DraftKings. Um, and his inside the distance prop is, let's take a look at it. I mean, it's, it's really not great. You know, it is favored to go to a decision. And his, his own inside the distance prop at plus 275, plus 300, that's not exactly the greatest. OK, so I would actually say that if you played cash, which I don't think I've ever done, I think Magdalene is probably something you have to do. Um, but uh, I, I, I would be remiss to at least not point this out. I mean, he's, he's going to look like a really, really strong play when you run any type of projections just because his his win odds are just so strong relative to his price. So that's that's the other thing I wanted to mention. The other thing is let's go through the rest of the fights because just to reiterate what I was thinking before is I was imagining that this women's fight of um, Lang Na and, and Gomez Suarez would end up being just the most popular fight on the slate because it had a, it had a um, an inside the distance problem plus 280 or something like that, which is pretty nuts for a women's fight. And I actually was of the opinion that that's probably too high anyway. and You should probably at the over um or better to 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 not finish um and i was going to fade this fight just presuming it was going to be the highest own but what i've learned over the past couple of days and just watching a lot of people i respect is is there are a, a some a, a handful of pretty decent underdogs when, when it comes to 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 win condition and we're going to talk about that and what that creates is a card where, I mean, it's a great card to teach people how to play MMA GPPs, okay? The, the idea of win condition and, and the what if happens type of analysis is, is 
is illustrated really well in a lot of these matchups today. And unfortunately or fortunately, what you're just going to have to do is just kind of pick your favorites. And, and, and I'll, I'll show you. So first of all, the Leon uh, Gomez Suarez fight, again, this is a plus 280 to finish uh, fight um, or minus 280 to finish fight. So, you know, based on the math and based on the numbers, these, these girls are 8,600, 7,600. You, you have to play this fight, okay? The only reason you wouldn't want to play this fight is if it was going to be too high owned. But as I'm going to get into, th there are some other options in that 7,600 range, for example, that, you know, that make sense and make enough sense that they are going to take a little bit of ownership away from this fight and maybe deservedly so. So let's not completely fade this, this, this Gomez Suarez fight. But one thing you could do just to kind of have some fun is you could play kind of hedge life and you can play because I do think that betting the the fights go to decision at plus huge odds, is probably a probably a good EV play. And yet for GPPs, you probably want to play these fighters because you're going to get probably 100 points out of someone who's either 8600 or 7600. So uh, from a GPP DraftKings perspective, given the fact that I don't think it's going to be that highly owned, uh, you can play this still. Um, but let's take a look at some of these other fights. And, and, and they all kind of fit the same kind of pattern in that if we have a, we'll have a grappler or someone who would like to grapple as an underdog. In other words, you, you have a striker as a favorite and a grappler as an underdog. And with the grappler being a favorite, it's more like, excuse me, and with the uh, striker as the favorite, it's more likely the striker wins. But in those times where the, the, the grappler wins, he's going to score decently. So those are fights that you really want to look to key, um, especially the, the grappler side is to put in your underdog pool. Um, and then you have other fights that, that don't fit that mold, that don't have a good inside the distance prop that, Quite honestly, I can't think of any reason to play, you know. Um, the only reason I think you could consider playing those types of fights are because they're going to be extremely low owned. But you can't imagine on an 11 fight slate, anybody's going to be that low. Owned. So I'm probably going to full fade those fights that don't fit, you know, either that grappler versus striker um, uh, quality or something with a real strong inside the distance prop. So let's take a look at these. It's going to fit one or the other. So the first fight, Pasquale Edwards, this one is going to be a full fade because when I mean, you look at it, it's a, there's no win equity issue. There's a inside the distance prop where it's a big, pretty decent favorite to go to decision. You don't have this big grappling situation. So it's just really a fade. You talked about the Gomez Suarez fight. Right, then you have this other one, this kind of type two fight, this Dana Baccarel against Kang, Kang Young Kyo. And it's kind of a, a style fight. You know, if Kang Young Kyo can, can establish his wrestling and get takedowns, he has a pretty decent win condition at only plus 115. So um, he's a very, very live, uh, I guess, mid range underdog at 7,900. And yet, on the other hand, Baccarel. He has a lot of power, and although he's a striker, he has a pretty decent, you know, not, not through the roof, but a pretty decent inside the distance prop. Um, you know, him winning by TKO is plus 188. I mean, at 8,200 or 8,400, I mean, that's really, really strong. So this is kind of that type two fight where, where you have a clash of styles, where if either style comes through, it's probably good enough to make the optimal or at least compete to make the optimal. I'm not saying it's going to make the optimal because there are a lot of fights that are like that uh, on this card. Um, and this is one of them. Uh, Garcia Machete. This was one that I originally was, was, was really, really into. Um, and I haven't heard this fight talked about enough. In other words, you, hear, you see some people saying, okay, I like Garcia. Some people saying maybe Machete, but the fact remains, this does have a pretty strong inside the distance prop of plus 220, you know, uh, excuse me, a minus 220. So it's a fight that I think you really want to go to get after here. The only thing I would say is that um, 
is that it's not a striker versus grappler thing. It is a striker versus striker. Um, the one bit I would throw in here is it, it kind of my uh, my one uh, adjustment to what I was saying earlier is I was really about Garcia or nothing. I am going to probably consider playing some machete um, because again, I just absorbed what the industry has been saying. And no, I really have not heard a, anything resembling a confident machete take the whole week. And he's only plus 140. He's got the home fort court advantage. I mean, he's in Singapore, you know, not that he's from Singapore, but you know, he, <laughs> let's not call it what it is. I mean, he's Asian and he's fighting in Singapore. Um, and all his friends are going to be coming from all over the place to watch him. Um, uh, if they get into a big volume match and it's close, uh, don't, don't be hoping to have Garcia in a decision. Let's put it that way. Um, so, uh, I am going to get some machete. I think he's going to be pretty low owned as well. Uh, moving up. This is another, this is a, this is a fade. The sing what the Sonya Choi fight. There's just striker versus striker poor inside the distance prop. No interest. I probably have zero of that. All right. And th this fight's been giving me kind of, kind of a, uh, whatchamacallit, giving me kind of a headache, all right? So I was so confident in this fight before. I don't know why I'm getting talked off of this. So you have Brendan Allen, who's a minus 300 favorite. You have an inside the distance prop of, of minus 200. I mean, what's the problem here? I mean, all, I, I'm just, I'm getting all this Malcoon stuff. And I guess the reason why is his win condition is just so perfect. You know, he's, he is going to go for all these chain takedowns. And if in fact he gets them, I mean, he's going to score and, and he's only what? seven seven thousand 7,000 or 7,200. So if he gets those takedowns and, and, and controls the action at 7,200, it's going to be enough. So this is, um, but it only happens you know, plus 240, what is it, 20%, 25% of the time, maybe? I mean, is that good enough? I don't know. I'll probably end up getting talked into this and sprinkling some Malcoon. But I don't know. I got to respect the numbers here a little bit. And I still think Allen's a really strong player, I mean, especially now with Manel Cop out. You know, where, where are you going to get your points from? I mean, he's got a minus 300 freaking favorite. That's that's you know minus two hundred fight doesn't go to decision. He's got KO upside. He's got grappling. He's got some submission upside. I I don't even understand. Um, okay, uh, moving on. Uh, Fialo Jake Matthews. So this one is another one that's been billed by the industry as kind of a striker versus grappler. Um, it does have a okay inside the distance prop, but, but the inside the distance is really just by Fialo because you look at Fialo's win by TKO and that in and of itself is a plus 120. I feel as though, and again, this is just feel that the Matthew side has kind of been overstated. Um, I, I, I don't believe that his path to victory necessarily includes like all kinds of takedown upside. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to play a little of him, but in my bigger buy-ins, for example, I'm not going to play him and I'm probably going to be underweight. Uh, if anything, I will have the Fialo side. Um, I just, I just don't believe that the, uh, the, 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 the grappling piece of this one. Now the Magdalena Amiv fight, this is the, I really do believe this. One, okay. Now, now Amiv is strictly going to go for takedowns and, and control time. Um, the only issue with him is now these odds, right? Now he's just kind of mispriced sort of, um, with his win equity. But the question is, is does his takedown upside compensate for kind of a poor win equity price? I, I think it does. And I also think that, that his relative lack of ownership is going to overcome that as well. So I, I am, I'm going to definitely be playing some Ameev in GPPs and I'm probably going to be under on the Magdalena side in GPPs only because again, it's just such a, I don't know. I, I just think he's going to be really high owned because of that win equity. I don't think that the, the inside the distance prop is that great. And I just don't see the, uh, 
when you have these types of style clashes, it's just tough to, to just knock out that wrestler like that. So I don't know. I'm, I'm probably going to be more on the Amiv side here. Cap Bonsarin, we mentioned, is out. Zhang Wei Li, I'm still full fading this one. You have no good win equity. You have no good, you know, it's minus 200 to go to decision. Uh, not playing this. I just don't see any grappling upside really for either one to speak of. And this is not of any interest to me. So Shevchenko, I mean, I've seen it all week. People are just making these reasons to fade her because she's 9,600. And this is typically the logic that, well, with the 9,600, I mean, you really need to get 130. First of all, you don't, okay? You need to get 130 when there's a lot of other guys are getting 110 to 120. There are only 11 fights, you know? If you have someone who's a minus 600 favorite who consists, continually puts up numbers like Shevchenko, I don't see exactly why you'd want to fade. All right. I've already identified there are underdogs that you can play to get to her. And we'll get to another one in a second. So I'm, I can't think of any reason to not play Shevchenko. What I might do is play some Santos. You know what I mean? Because the Santos piece is going to be the real low owned part. Because what people are going to do is they're going to play either, they're going to say, this is what I'm hearing, Shevchenko in, in cash, but try to fade her in GPPs because of the price. I still haven't heard a, any expert saying they're taking Santos. And it's not as if he, she's minus plus 1,000, right? She does win this fight 20% of the time, believe it or not, okay? And if you have someone 6,600 who's winning the fight 20% of the time, I mean, imagine what you're doing to this field in an 11-game slate, so to speak when she's going to be less than 10% owned, then you could, then you could go for all kinds of stuff. Then, then your lineups will end up with, 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 um, uh, with, uh, with Jerry, with, with Brendan Allen. Um, you could get to Fiala with, with easily, you know, the only reason you might not want to play Santos is maybe there isn't that other stuff that you need to get to. Right. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to play some of her. Um, and I'm definitely going to not fade you. Um, so I'm going to probably get some of both. Uh, and Yuri against Teixeira. I mean, this is, again, this is, this is your classic underdog play, right? You have, first of all, he's only plus 160. He's being priced as if she's, he's plus 200. Second of all, he's got all the grappling upside. This is going to be his path to victory. Number three, he does have submission upside as well, right? Um, and it's the clash of styles. So, I mean, this is a, a really strong underdog play, which is going to be really popular. And that's the only reason to fade it. Um, and, and, and Yuri on the other side is obviously a really, really strong GP play as well. I mean, he's got five rounds to work with. He's got all kinds of KO upside. His inside the distance prop is extremely strong. So I'm you know, not going to take a particular stand on that. So what, what have we done here? What have I just done? Have I just told you to play everybody? I don't think so. But what I've, I've identified is that it's a bunch of fights that you can play. And you're going to be able to create good GPP lineups from all of those fights I identified. And unfortunately, you're just going to have to hope to get lucky that your combination is the, is the right one. Um, what you can do is, pay, is take the ones that rate to be the lowest owned um, and, you know, you could look at my updated numbers to figure out who those are or whatever. Um, but I'm definitely full fading the Edwards fight, definitely full fading the Choi fight, definitely full fading the, the, um, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the Zhang Wei Li fight. And I guess if there are fighters I'm going to be under on, I guess it would be, boy, Matthews? Maybe Magdalena. Um, aside from that, I'm just going to just pick my favorites and, and, you know, play like 20, 30 lineups um, and choose from those underdogs that I identify. Um, and if you're going to only play one lineup, look, you're probably going to get the wrong one, but that's okay. I promise you that if you follow the advice I gave you and, and choose from those underdogs, um, you're going to get good EV lineups. Look, play Shevchenko. 
play, I would play Brandon Allen or whatever, play Shevchenko and then pick your favorite, you know, either grappler or striker from those 8Ks, those, those, those mid-range fights, and you'll have a good lineup. If you want, I, 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 I can tell you what you can do. If you really want to be, um, be different, maybe it's not that different, but there, there are people that, that, that play the grappler underdogs almost habitually. And there are people that don't really care whether the underdogs are grapplers or not. What you can do if you want to have your lineup somewhat different is play lineups with maybe one striker underdog and one grappler underdog. Cause not that many people are going to do that. So what's an example of a striker underdog that we've identified? Well, let me, let me suggest one to you. And this is, this is not going to be most, this is going to be pretty unpopular. I mentioned him earlier, but maybe, maybe you take a shot with that Matashe. Um, it's, it's a striker. It's does, he doesn't really project to be that great, you know, and Garcia probably has the better grappling, but if you get away with it as him and an underdog, you're going to be pretty different. Um, so I guess that's all I got for you guys. I, I still would play that, um, that, that, that Suarez not fight to go over, even though and you see the irony here, even though I'm probably going to be jamming into most GPP uh, lineups um, and uh, enjoy really, really fun card.